out here to the hills of Malibu to experience the 2017 Chiron. So let's hit the mountain roads and see what it can do. All right, you join me now inside the Bugatti Chiron. Um, one of the things that really has taken me aback about this car, besides the fact it is otherworldly fast, is that it's actually very characterful in the noises it makes. It's very mechanical, it's very engaging. I'm hoping some of this comes across on camera, but this thing really makes a great mechanical sound. It sounds very turbocharged. You can hear the turbochargers working. You can hear the wastegate noise coming out of the exhaust. You can hear the blow-off valves and lift off. You can hear the valve train of the engine. You really hear the turbos spooling around 2,000 RPM where it delivers max torque all the way up to like 6,000 RPM. It's a really broad torque band. And you can really hear the turbochargers working way down low when you load it up. It's a really great mechanical sound that really helps you engage with the car. And of course it has that top end scream. I was actually really surprised to find out that this car revs to over 7,000 RPM, 7,250 to be specific, which is pretty impressive when you consider it's an eight liter W16 engine. It's a, there's a lot of rotating mass there, but it still can rev really high and does make power all the way up there. It's a very tractable power band. horsepower it's amazing how well this car puts the power down to the ground especially off the line I didn't have a chance to use launch control yet but it's a pretty violent feeling of acceleration especially in the first two to three gears of course it's pretty unrelentless all the way up through the gears but still the feeling that you can be in second gear full throttle in a car at 1500 horsepower and not have any wheel spinach go is incredible part of that in addition to the all-wheel drive system is the fact that it's very long-legged. Second gear goes to almost 100 miles an hour, which gives the car this sensation of just never-ending speed and acceleration. Because it takes a bit of time to get through the rev range, you look down at the tack, you realize you're only at 5,000. There's still over 2,000 RPM left to go. So it gives, this, it gives a, a sensation of just never-ending speed and acceleration. Which is kind of funny because in a lot of normal cars, like, oh, long gear and curves acceleration, but this thing has so much raw power that it really can't have shorter gearing without getting tons of wheel spin. And it's funny that it actually lends itself to a, a sense of theater because it just, it lets you know there's more. There's always more left untapped in this car. And it rewards you, it really charges hard all the way through the power band. A lot of turbocharged cars in an effort to make a lot of torque and a lot of power have a very narrow power band. They're very peaky. This thing is not. It's very, very tractable. The power band is huge. Everyone gets stuck up on horsepower figures, torque figures, and acceleration, but what's often not discussed is the fact that the chassis of this car, the thing that makes it handle, is fantastic. It has adaptive dampers and a bunch of adaptive settings. So depending on what mode you have, the little dial here in, it changes a lot of things about the car. The damping is incredible on this car. It's so perfect for bombing your favorite back road in such a great way. It manages to be equal parts stiff and compliant, which is a pretty impressive trick to, to have because on these canyon roads up here, it may not look like it on video, but they are very bumpy and very patchy. So as fun as they are to drive, if your car is too stiff, you're just gonna skate all over the place, not actually make any grip. Speaking of grip, the Chiron has massive rubber, which is awesome. It has 285s in the front and 355s in the back. So this thing is just planted. It is just stuck to the ground in a way that few other road cars are. It uses Michelin Pilot Sport Cup 2 tires, which are technically a streetable track day tire. And I'm a big fan. They're pretty easy to drive. They're not like a full on racing slick or competition tire. <laughs> I'm sorry, I lost my train of thought. That's really, really fun. All right, I'm gonna hammer it for just a second because I don't want to get in trouble. This car is very, very fast. Here is literally two seconds acceleration, which is all you need in this car. It's that fast. Ready, set, go. I'm not gonna say how fast that was, but we went from about 40 miles per hour to 
some miles per hour very, very fast indeed. It's a very approachable car overall. The tire grip is well matched to the suspension grip, which is well matched to the engine and the weight of the car. It all kind of works together as a great overall package. I could daily drive this car and be very happy. Of course, of course you would say that. It's a 1500 horsepower supercar, but no, I'm being completely serious. This car is very easy to get in and drive. This car is very, very approachable. Now don't take that to mean it's tame. It's not, it's still 1500 horsepower. It will bite you in the ass if you don't respect it. But. You can, approach, you can approach the practical limit of this car on the street, not the actual limit, the practical limit of this car on the street, and really enjoy it. cars and drive them everywhere. You can drive to work, you can drive in the canyon roads, or you can drive on the track. This car is really at home, kind of no matter where you want to be. It's a car for pretty much everyday usage if you're so inclined to, to do that. And it is really rewarding to drive even at 40 miles an hour. grabs a hold of you and makes you really excited to go driving.